So hello and good evening. This is Ruto Solo from Curval.com and it's been a long time since I've done these type of videos. And the reason for that is this. I have moved my offices. So now, as you can see, I'm in a different place. This is the new background. Hope you like it. And um, yeah, a lot, a lot of changes. It's taken quite a while. I actually started actually the move uh, at the end of September and I've been doing that since now. So now everything is in place, more or less. So yeah, I hope you like mini office. I'm really happy about it. And as you can have seen on the title for the video today, I am actually going to uh, talk about what actually Curval means. Uh, this is something that you've been asking me for a long time and I've been actually um, asking you to, to wait a little and uh, now is the perfect time to do it. A few things have happened that I wouldn't happen that make this video even more special, at least uh, for me, hopefully for you too. So, Curbal started actually uh, three years ago, um, four, four years ago, I mean the actual beginnings were four years ago. I was uh, working with a water company and uh, I had the possibility to volunteer, uh, do some volunteering work. And uh, I had the possibility to go to Peru. I absolutely love it. We were up in the Andes and um, we were actually uh, helping the, the, the villages to find their water sources, to document it and to see what problems they had to be able to provide afterwards a better water source for them. So it was a fantastic journey. And how is that connected to Corval? Well, uh, I have um, wanted to show my parents, my family, my friends what the journey was about. And I thought, okay, I will start a website and I will be able to share what I'm doing. Um, but of course, that was not possible because it, there is no access points in the Andes, at least not where I was. So I've documented everything. I have a down below a link of pictures and also some of my thoughts after the trip in case you are curious about. Peru is a fantastic place in case you haven't been there. Just go beautiful and the people is just amazing. Anyhow, that's not what we're talking about. So uh, the idea was that I would actually create a website to share the experience with uh, my loved ones. And um, it was not really possible to do it there live. I didn't really have the time either, to be honest. So I documented everything and then I said, okay, I will do that when I come back. And I put up the website and I've uh, documented what we did and I had it. A, live probably like two years, three years. And I used Google Analytics to actually track how the website was doing. And I thought it was so fun. It was like really, really, really fun. And then I started another website uh, about technology servers. And I have, a, I have a few websites out there that I don't maintain so often, but now and then I do. And um, I, I think that I've always, always uh, been a very analytical person, but that experience kicked my analytics passion to another level, you know. It just put it in a gear that I didn't know I had. I just thought it was so much fun. And Google Analytics is a very complex program. You can do certain things, but they are not they don't have a lot of value unless you go all the way. And it's not that easy to know how to do it. And I decided that I wanted to help companies to actually use their data because there is so much information and there's so much you can do that will actually help you grow whatever you're growing. If it is your company or if it is, um, I don't know, if you are a non-profit business to do that better, to save money, I mean, the opportunities are actually endless. And I, I had a talent for it so that I, I, I wouldn't give it a go. I would definitely want to try to make a living out of it because I would love to do it. So I started a company and that's how Kerbal started or not. It, 
<laughs> it, did, it did start that way, but uh, it was not named Kerbal. It was actually named Intel Cube. And uh, I've registered the name uh, at the Swedish office for, uh, you know, for the company. And then I also decided that I wanted to do a trademark, to register as a trademark, to protect the name. And uh, I did that. I got it approved for the name of the company, I got it approved as a trademark. And then I had like, I think it's like three, four months uh, before um, somebody can, uh, you know, um, say that, yeah, no, I claim, you know, that this is my name and nobody else should use it. And um, yeah, guess who called my door? So I received, I don't remember really if it was an email that I received or if it was a letter, perhaps it was a letter. I actually don't remember, but it doesn't matter. But one of these fancy lawyer firms in Stockholm sent me a beautiful letter or email where it basically said, Ruth, we don't want you to use the name of Intel in your company. And that was representing Intel, of course. And uh, I was actually a bit surprised because the Swedish government said yes and, and the trademark office in Sweden said also yes. So I said, okay, if they said yes, maybe Intel does not have the rights for it. And I'm not making microchips, so, hmm. I mean, so I said, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a fight. I don't want to just because, you know, somebody just tell me I shouldn't do it, uh, give up so easy. So I said, I thought to myself, as long as the trademark office in Sweden will help me, I will fight this. So I started to send papers and then we sent papers back and forth, where I should have it, why I shouldn't have it. And uh, suddenly the Swedish trademark office says, okay, we, we don't think you have the right and Intel has the right and we're dropping the case. And as far as, as soon as they dropped the case, I had no chance with my means to fight Intel. So I knew that it was a lost cause. I was actually, I'm not disappointed at Intel at all. I think they did what they have to do. I mean, they have a brand, they want to protect it, they are protecting it very aggressively. But still, if nobody says no, they have the right. Um, what I'm disappointed at is actually the Swedish Patent Office, because when I actually registered the name, I did it thinking that they will help me in that case, in a case that something like this would happen. And as soon as Intel shows some muscles, they just back off and left me alone with that. So that is what disappoints me. Not that Intel was fighting what they thought it was theirs. Then there is a question if there is actually theirs or not to have, but I guess I will have to be a lawyer in the next life to find out. Um, so that, that was a huge setback when the trademark office said that you cannot have, I mean, we're given the rights to Intel as you, you, you are not allowed to use the trademark, even if we said so in the beginning. And when that happened, I've, I've been running Intel Cube for like, I don't know, seven, eight months. And I've done all this time the marketing and I was ranking well in Google. And you know, the name was not big, but it was there. And changing the name, it basically means that I changed Google. I mean, I lost Google rankings and nobody would know what I am. Um, I will have to do everything from scratch. And, you know, when you are starting a company, that's the last thing you want to do. It takes a long, long, long time to change names, company names. I knew that for a fact because I worked for ITT before and ITT changed their name like every two years. So I know exactly what it took. Of course, ITT is a huge company, but even if a small company is a lot of work. Anyhow, so I actually changed the name. No, I, I've actually, you know, I, I, I was actually like devastated. I, I was crushed. I was like, oh my God. I, it was it was going in through my head all the things that I would have to do and all the time that I've lost because I would have to start from the beginning and finding a name for a company is such a hard thing to do 
you have to, you know, if you want a .com, you have to find a name that is available. There are not many, I promise you. You have to make sure that it's not offensive in any other language. You have to, you have to like it yourself. You, you, it has to sound good. I mean, there are like a thousand rules that you should follow if you want to have a good company name. And it took me forever to find Intercube, Intercube. So I was like, oh my God, it might take me like two months to find the new name. And Intel was, you know, knocking on the door and saying, okay, now you have to drop it. This is our name, you don't have a right to use it. And you don't want to delay that. I mean, I'm sure that they would have allowed me to have a few months in name, but I, I, just, I just wanted to close the door and say, okay, this is gone, this, I've done this, didn't go well. Let's just start over and do it. So I remember walking home feeling like crashed. And I'm laughing now. I wasn't laughing then. And then I said, OK, this is the biggest curveball anybody can throw at me at this point. And then I started thinking, like, well, maybe curveball is not a bad name. And I was desperate, really. <laughs> I just wanted to find a good name. So I rushed home, check if curveball.com was uh, taken, which of course it was. And I said, okay, maybe I can do it phonetically. So it sounds like it, but it's not written like it. And that is how Curveball was born. So it's basically a phonetic uh, translation of the actual Curveball uh, word. So for those of you that don't know, curveball is, um, you know, you throw curveballs in baseball. That's why the, the ball is supposed to look like a baseball ball. I don't know if it does. But uh, it basically, when somebody throws you a curveball, what happens is that it, they are, something unexpected or unexpected happened to you and you have to deal with it. And I thought it was such a great name, you know, was once I, I could just be calm and think about it because it would be a reminder of all the things that are going to happen in my way to trying to build a company. So I am sure that there are many, many, many more and they've already come a lot. Other curveballs, but I will have, by having the name, you know, by embracing that this is going to happen, I think I have a better chance to succeed because it happened once it did it, I move along, and things progressed, and nobody died, so everybody's happy. So it actually means a lot. It, it, is, it is a name that means more than the actual curveball, because it, it, it has a story behind. And in this case, it's a happy story. It's gone well, very well for curveball, so I'm super happy for it. Um, but it was tough, actually. It was really, really tough. I, I was so sad. But <laughs> it, it, it went very, very well, anyhow. So why telling the story now? Here's the thing. On the process of changing names, I wanted to do it, as I said, as fast as possible. I didn't want to have Intel on my back anymore. And I said, OK, uh, I'm going to do this very very quickly it won't be pretty but I, I just wanted to get it done i have i had so many other things to do that would bring value to the business than just you know doing all this stuff so i just open word i wrote curveball i gave it a little bit of color i said okay this is a curveball this is related to baseball so i drew a baseball as a icon for the logo and then i just Oh my God, I just painted it green. Green is the color of hope. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm done. I, it took seriously an hour. And I don't think, or perhaps you have, I don't know. I haven't got any comments about, oh, your logo is so ugly. Uh, you should change it. It's more like curiosity, like what does it mean? Why do you have a ball? And, you know. But I have thought about it. I never really liked the look and feel, but perhaps because I know it was done so quickly. It never had any thought behind. It was just like, do something and get on with it. 
So September, I contacted a designer that I've worked with before. He's done another logo for me. He's fantastic. Alex is his name. So I contacted Alex and I said, okay, now it's time to create, redo the logo of my company. And uh, we've been working on it since September up to now. He's taken a little bit of time because with him and I, we've been busy. And also because it is a creative process. So he would send me things and I will sleep over them and then I will comment to this after and then send it back. And, you know, it is, you have to not only think, but also feel at least that's the way I wanted to do it. And for this logo, I actually gave him a, quite a t tough challenge, I would say. I said, I want to keep the ball because it means so much. It's just this endurance part of it that I absolutely love and I know that you'd like the ball too right you've told me that so I said the ball has to stay and then I said I I wanted you you know Curval community to be a part of it because you are so much a part of what I do I mean of course this is not what I do then I have the actual business with customers where I'm delivering Power BI, you don't see that. But this is a big part of what Curval is and I really wanted to incorporate you guys into it. I wanted to incorporate the, the sense of community that I've felt. I hope you do too. Now it's not just me sharing my tips, you are also sharing your tips through me. And I know because I've just sent me the comments, you love it. I love it too. So you are a big part of what Kerbal is and I wanted it to be in the logo too. So it was a community, it was YouTube, it was you guys, it was the ball. And then we are a business intelligence company. So if possible, do something like that too. And he created this, it's just, gorgeous. So if you look at it, you will see the green ball and this is still there and it's still green. We still have hopes. And then you have the two uh, like balls here that were like part of, of the baseball and those are people. So that is you and me and we together are Kerbal. And then you have the other balls running around. It looks more like a satellite or something. And that is um, a bubble chart. I love bubble chart. So everything together, it actually shows what Kerbal is. At least it does for me. And then the name is super cool because it has a Kerbal and then it's like slope. So you can see Kerbal growing. Like, if you work with Curveball, you'll grow. Something like that. And I, I thought he was so smart. I mean, he, he's like smart cookie, I tell you that. He's just, his creativity is just absolutely amazing. And the, the logo came out so gorgeous, I think. What do you think? Do you like it? I, I would love to hear your comments, really. Let me know in the comment box. Uh, Perhaps you prefer the old one. I, I think the new one is really, really nice. Uh, but yeah, so this is basically what Kerbal, how Kerbal was born. And I have changed the logo now. I will go through the YouTube branding too, just to, to make it look a little bit less homemade, even if it's homemade. I think it would be nice to, you know, light it up a little bit. So you would see some changes very, very soon also on how the YouTube channel looks, but that will come probably in a week or two. So yeah, this is how Kerbal was born. Uh, let me know what you think about it. I would love to hear your comments and hopefully you like the logo as much as I do. So yeah, that's all for today. Have a great, great evening and take care. I will see you soon. Bye.